So Soulcap, a black-owned company that designed and manufactures swimming caps, got rejected from the Federation for international competitions in water sports. That group said that the sole caps deviate from, quote, the natural form of the head. Soulcap.com. Soulcap. Big hair deserves big care. Hair care for the volume blessed. Being blessed with voluminous hair shouldn't come with a curse of harsh chemicals or mediocre products. Read our story. Going against the tide, we are Michael and Tox. Neither one of us had ever learned how to swim, so we started to learn together. And one day, we met a woman with Afro hair who struggled with the size of her swimming cap. And that got us to thinking, why weren't there more products for people blessed with voluminous hair? That one woman we met stuck in our minds. So over the next few weeks, we spoke to our sisters, our moms, and our circle of friends. The more we learned, the more we started to see a real problem in the health and beauty industry. It was completely overlooking the needs of people with thick, curly, and voluminous hair. We wanted to make what no one else was making. With these hair types in mind, we started to design the first sole cap, an extra large swimming cap created for swimmers who struggle with their hair. We went through dozens of designs and sourced hundreds of different samples to find the products and manufacturers that met our highest standards. We've shipped more than 30,000 of our swimming caps to customers all over the world. We're already working hard to bring you the next product in our line. Now, the company has responded saying, quote, we hope to further our work for diversity in swimming by having our swim caps certified for competition so swimmers at any level don't have to choose between the sport they love and their hair. Deviate from the natural form of the head? What does that even mean? Right. What's the natural form of the head? Isn't your natural hair, just as your natural hair, Sam, would be the natural form of the hair, however it goes into the swim cap? And the Speedo 50 was created for Caucasian women's hair in order to keep it under there. So as somebody who just swam when I was little with the caps, your hair doesn't fit in there comfortably. Well, even from a high school level, we saw with Brecken Willis. A competitive high school swimmer loses a victory after she won the race, all because of the fit of her swimsuit. Now, Brecken Willis is one of the fastest racers in the entire state. Her disqualification during a meet Friday has rocked Alaska's swimming community. Channel 2 investigative reporter Jill Burke has more on the story tonight. Jill? Mike and Rebecca, the Anchorage School District says it's looking into whether the ref's call was reasonable. The student athlete, now a senior at Diamond High School, along with her younger sister, a sophomore, has worked hard to make it happen. So you're talking about two high schoolers, and this is their commitment, their consistency. For the last three years, have been in this weight room, just working their hearts out to get stronger. Week after week, trainer Dwayne Ingram has watched the girls get stronger and faster. Brecken's disqualification after a victory Friday garnered swift backlash from swimmers and coaches. The National Federation of High School Sports Association's illustration of proper and improper fit. The so-called modesty rule requires breasts, genitals, and buttocks to be covered. But it does not state that coverage of the buttocks needs to be full coverage. That's, that's something that we have gotten carried away with, and if we're going to police this rule, if it's covered, if it's not a thong or a g-string, then it's in compliance. The referee who made the call and Diamond's swim coach did not return our calls. Monday afternoon, the Anchorage School District said it was looking into the situation and confirmed Brecken was wearing the approved school-issued suit during the race. The rest of her team was wearing the same uniform and she was the only one disqualified. It is my opinion that she has been targeted and singled out over the course of the last year. When people supporting the referee's decision are saying things like this. That the girls have done this on purpose, that they were warned, that they got what they deserved. 
that they had what, what was coming to them. And the Alaska School Athletics Association, which oversees the implementation of the national rules, told us it encourages officials to give the benefit of the doubt to the athlete. Brecken's mom is angry things have gotten to this point, that what should be a conversation about performance and skill has somehow become sexualized. She wants the disqualification overturned, her daughter's victory reclaimed, and the referee who made the call off the deck. It's real suspicious how these reporters forgot to add the fact that Brecken Willis and her twin sister are biracial and that their mother believes that they've been racially profiled. Brecken Willis' title was returned to her and the rules were suspended. In Alaska, the swim suit was made for somebody with a different body than hers. So because of her body shape, she was disqualified right. and then allowed back in. And so that's another example of why swimming maybe needs to diversify. And so having people look really closely into these issues with the Olympics is something that we have to change moving forward because it's not inclusive for black people, black women. In the U.S., more than 10 people die from drowning each day. One in five of those deaths are children between the ages of 1 and 14. And most of those deaths are disproportionately black. Why is this happening? And why are black children drowning at such high rates? From the north to the south, white-only pools became hallmarks for racial exclusion. And they would stay that way until the 60s. Southern cities used Jim Crow laws to enforce segregation in pools and other public spaces, while northern cities used intimidation and violence to keep blacks out. All the while, local chapters of the NAACP worked to file lawsuits against neighborhood pools and beaches that denied blacks access. Pools went from being places for leisure to racial battlegrounds, and it would take two protests in Florida to change that. What are you prepared to do now, Dr. King? Well, we will uh, stand here and protest what we feel is a blatant injustice. On June 11, 1964, police arrested Dr. Martin Luther King and more than a dozen religious leaders after they staged a protest against racial segregation at the Monson Motor Lodge in St. Augustine, Florida. His arrest inspired others to act. Less than a week later, 16 rabbis joined a group of black and white protesters at the same hotel. As the rabbis prayed on the property, protesters jumped into a white-only pool to stage a swimming. What happened next sent shockwaves across the country. That's the Motor Lodge hotel owner, James Brock, pouring acid into the pool to get protesters out. Media reports of the story sparked enough outrage to gain the attention of then-President Lyndon B. Johnson. Some activists even say it influenced Johnson to sign the Civil Rights Act less than a month later. All men are entitled to the blessings of liberty, yet millions are being deprived of those blessings, not because of their own failures, but because of the color of their skin. The bill outlawed segregation based on race, color, religion, or sex, a notion that until that point was common practice throughout most of the country. A South Carolina woman is facing assault and battery charges after being accused of hitting a black teenager at a community pool. A camera caught Stephanie Sebi Strimple last month as she appeared to verbally and physically assault 15-year-old Darshan Rockamore Simmons, also known as DJ. She called me the N-word and she called me a punk. 15-year-old DJ says he was invited to the pool by a friend when Stephanie Sebi Strimple approached him. 911, okay? Get out. He says she physically and verbally assaulted him and forced him to leave. This lady walked up to us and was like, y'all have to leave. And you said? We said, yes, ma'am. When I started walking out, she just started hitting me. What? were you thinking when this woman is assaulting you? It was shocking. Like everyone else, I have never had any issues with someone having an issue with assault until today. Mind you, we are, if you look around, we are the only black people out here. Cam reporter shot this cell phone video July 4th. She says it shows the now former property manager at River Set Apartments calling Memphis police. A property manager should be able to de-escalate something to handle a situation as simple as that was without involving 
MPD. She says it all started when the manager approached Porter's boyfriend about not wearing socks in the pool. But the Memphis native claims the manager didn't seem to have a clear explanation for what was proper pool attire. She basically said no hats, no, no shirts, no socks. We have two men who are her friends and right here in uh, hats, two hats. Uh, we have a man over here sitting in the head. She says she saw men swimming in basketball shorts. But nothing was said to them, nothing was done to them. But as soon as we walked into the area, the being the only black family and we're the only people that you addressed at that time, that made me feel like it was racially motivated. Porter's Facebook post led the apartment's ownership group to reach out to her. On their Facebook page, Riverside Apartments said they do not support discrimination of any kind and are investigating. Then this update. This former employee's actions violate our company's policies and beliefs. She is no longer employed by River Set Apartments. You can't treat people like that this day and age. It's, it's not right. There's good news here, Brianna. In the last couple of hours, FINA, that is that national, international governing body for swimming, the Federation, has said it's going to reconsider its decision. Uh, the outpouring over the last 48 hours has been extraordinary on this. And unlike what we were just talking about, where things are set in stone, this could be uh, something they could change their mind. And uh, I think it's a terrible look for swimming because what, what is swimming trying to do right now? It's trying to diversify. It's trying to become more inclusive around the world in the United States. Uh, very, very few black children are swimming compared to white children. And it's about safety and the health and learning how to swim. Michael Phelps and others have, have really championed this cause just to keeping kids safe, much less making them uh, uh, you know, Olympians at some point, elite swimmers. And uh, most of these organizations around the world are failing in terms of attracting a more diverse uh, child to you know more diverse audience to their sport. So that's the bigger picture. That swimming was basically putting up a stop sign saying, forget about it. Don't if you're if you're black, if you're a person of color, uh, don't don't even think about it. And that's a devastating message to send. Uh, I think that's another reason why they're reconsidering it this morning, and I think that's a good thing.